YouTube Game Review Bandwagon, I promised myself that when it came time to be all angry and irate or whatever, I would only sit in my crosshairs. Games I held a special seat in contempt for. Games like X-Men Game Master's Legacy, Beavis and Butthead, Star Trek DS9. Franchises beloved by all, but were anal raped by incompetent developers. Or something like Final Fantasy II. A shit stain on an otherwise great track record. And now, it's time for another one. One that signaled how a franchise that held such promise had been run into the ground. Something so banal and vile, I won't even give it to a rat to use a chew toy. Everyone, I present to you Tomb Raider 4, The Last Revelation. When Tomb Raider debuted in 1996, it seemed to have everything going for it. Full 3D platforming slash adventuring was in its infancy, but along with Super Mario 64, Lara Croft showed us how awesome it could be. Though a bit slow paced and not without its flaws, it was a groundbreaking game that withstood the test of time, but as we know, for its sequels, core design pretty much gave gamers more of the same. That's not always a bad thing. Some gameplay formulas seem as fresh as a daisy no matter how often they've been recycled. Just look at Mega Man if you want proof. Not only did fans eagerly devour all of the Blue Bomber's classic outings back in the day, but they welcomed him back with open arms after a whole decade, choosing which order of stages to blow through and snagging the boss's weapons never got old. But here, it's like Core purposely wanted us to swear off the TR formula forever. Right from the get-go, this was apparent, as Last Revelation starts with an UNSKIPPABLE tutorial stage with a teenage Lara. As if insulting our intelligence by FORCING us to go over the same controls from the other three games wasn't bad enough, we get this slab of jailbait served to us. Up until then, I could forgive the erotic fixation some had with Lara, but this was a bridge too far! This idiotic tutorial also puts emphasis on when Lara finds her knapsack. Really? Is her knapsack so iconic, it deserves special attention? It was far more compelling the first time Solid Snake picked up a cardboard box! Yes, it too is an everyday object, but the manner in which Snake uses it is unique. Lara's knapsack is... JUST A FUCKING KNAPSACK! Now, once this fuckness is over and we fast forward, Turns out the plot is about the return of Lara's long-dead mentor, Von Croy, who's possessed by Horus or Set or something, and plans to unleash... <sighs> I, 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 I don't know. It's all told with mishmashy cutscenes that are all flash, hard to follow, and don't make me WANT to follow a goddamn thing. I never paid much attention to the original's plot, sure, but it didn't leave me feeling as empty as Michelle Bachman's cranium! You people need to learn some manners. This could have Tell been the best now. plot ever seen in a TR game. I mean, a long dead mentor, oh. Egyptian gods about to unleash Alexander. Armageddon, the kind of game plot that writes itself. Trouble is, that's exactly what Core did. Let the plot write itself, and the whole game suffers for it. Compounding an unmotivating plot about Egypt is that the entire game is more or less set in Egypt. So kiss any overwhelming level variety goodbye right now. Plus, unlike the third game, where you could pick your level order, Last Revelation has a strictly linear progression. Thank you so much, Core Design, for taking two Metal Gear Rexi steps backward! But there were absolutely no changes in terms of control scheme. Again, it's basically the same. X for action, square for jump, triangle to draw her guns, shoulder buttons for sidestepping, sprinting, crawling. It's not hard to work with, but it's so clunky and cumbersome. After three other titles, and when the original debuted the same year as Super Mario 64, you'd think Core would try making the controls smoother and more intuitive, but no. The clunky feel of the control permeates every aspect of this game. Like here, where I need to lure bull monsters into these cells and trap them. It's so ridiculously hard to just get in and out without them trampling Lara! Controlling Lara's vehicles offer little improvement, as there's plenty of retarded vehicle-related deaths. Hell, the controls and physics are so clunky, during combat, enemies can just walk around and nudge you off! The camera, as usual, sucks Tonberry testicles and gets ridiculously screwy in close quarters, like some of the areas where there's a pole to climb or slide down. 
I don't care how much of a kick-ass feminist icon Lara Croft is supposed to be, at these junctures I kept yelling, MOUNT THAT FUCKING POLE, YOU BITCH-ASS HOE-BAG! Speaking of which, when the camera gets screwy elsewhere, guess what it tends to fixate on? Not only will the camera and controls screw you over on a regular basis, but the whole game reeks of lazy, inept level design. Shall I find some choice examples? Oopsie doodle! Lara has only a sliver of life left and is sliding down an incline, but I'm sure the level designers won't have it so I automatically take a little damage when she hits you ASSHATS! Oh to nose, killer locust! But no need to worry, with these fluid controls, it's not like I'm gonna steer Lair into a wall or... Uh, never mind. Well, from this angle, that demon you can't... GOD DAMN IT! Okay, let's try again. Ran past the demon, but the locust came back. And a cutscene started. But I'm sure the programmers aren't You're so right incompetent. Lair will eat damage while a cutscene's going on, and... YOU FUCK ASSES! I'm getting the gist that blocks will rain down as I'm scaling this pyramid, but I'm confident there's plenty of time for Lair to look around, see where it's coming from, and uh, oh, oh, have mercy. What's this? Oily water and approaching flames? Well, no doubt the designers made sure I'd have enough time to react properly and, uh, just kill me now. I could devote a whole half hour to all the cheap deaths I recorded, but the only thing sadder than all that is how the overall level design quality has no style since the original. That game's levels ooze subtle brilliance, encouraged exploration, and only necessitated quick peeks at an FAQ, as opposed to this one requiring a falling apart guide in your lap that you just know the last owner substituted for a porno mag. All this is plainest in the Alexandria section. Look at this platforming action. This epic scenery. Kick ass, right? Never mind that there's nothing useful over here, and that Lair is not even supposed to come near the water until she fetches a certain key. Of course, to get that key, you gotta take a wild guess that you can combine that broom handle and hook so Lara can grab the key behind the bars. And to obtain the hook, you gotta take a wild guess to use a crowbar to pry it off the wall. And to even get to that room, among other things, you'll need a crossbow hidden in a room full of death traps visible only in the adjacent mirror. But you'll also need the laser scope which Lara's associate near the start of the Alexandria level just happens to have. Not that the game gave you hints or anything. Oh, but there's some glitch that's triggered if you had to backtrack to that guy with the scope, which will probably result in you losing the key altogether. So, if you saved over your pre-Alexandria files, you'll have to start Last Revelation all over AGAIN! Excuse me for just one moment. Mother! Just as inexcusable as the absence of effort put into TR1's overall design is doing nothing to fix the original's weak points, leading to some annoying holdovers. I already mentioned how clunky the combat here is, and how it hasn't improved at all since the original. Most shootouts can be won simply by jumping side to side and firing non-stop, even against mini-bosses. On top of that, you'll go through long stretches of doing nothing, broken up only by occasionally having to shoot some rabid animal, then it's back to walking around aimlessly figuring out what the hell you're supposed to do. Given the terrible level design, this makes the tedium and frustration exponentially worse. Who at Core Design must I thank for long hallways devoid of almost all opposition? You don't owe me anything. My hallways are clean. And let's not even get into how it doesn't look much better than the original. The only noticeable graphical enhancement being, well, Lyra doesn't have a rack that's a couple of triangles anymore. Oh yeah, and it's pretty ridiculous that there's practically no music. For the fourth game, well into the PS1's lifespan, some effort could be made into packing some sort of soundtrack in to enhance the mood. Trust me, by the time you're here, just about any music would be better than none. Let's try it. Ah, 
hours upon hours of such tedium and frustration await the poor soul who wants to witness this last revelation. But is there any light at the end of the tunnel? There should be an epic final battle with an Egyptian god, right? Not bloody likely. You're not supposed to attack this jack wagon at all. For the final run, it's nothing but a series of obscure climbing and switch pulling puzzles we've already been doing for hours on end already. You just slap some armor pieces on him, climb up and out when he awakens and tries to blast you, and that's it. Give me your hands. And no way the ending itself will be worth it either. We all know Lara will escape by the skin of her teeth and... Oh ho 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 ho! Maybe I spoke too soon. This could be easily the greatest ending to a game ever. It looks like Lara Croft is dead! Oh hells yeah! Rejoice everyone! This means no more rushed out the door Tomb Raider games! Finally we can- Ah shit! <sighs> yes, Eidos had to publish one more for the PS1, but their PS2 game was supposed to reinvent and reinvigorate the franchise. Instead it got panned worse than ever and Core Design was stripped of the rights to develop Tomb Raider games. After Crystal Dynamics took over, I heard that the series had somewhat redeemed itself in the eyes of fans. But I'm sorry, Lara. I just can't come back. What was supposed to be your last revelation to me hurt really deep. And in the following years, an old flame by the name of Samus Aaron swung by again. Instead of sticking to her guns, Samus punked everyone by pulling off gameplay styles no one ever thought possible of her. I'm sorry, Lara. On your fourth outing, you broke my heart and can only give it a 4 out of 10.